now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. It's a great Wednesday in your nation's capital, and we're thrilled here on O'Connor and Company to be able to usher you through it for the next four hours. By the way, we have a uh, primary coming up in Virginia next week, so we're trying to do a big rundown of all the candidates who you still need to hear from before you make your final decision. Starting at 615 with Jonathan Myers running in the 7th District in Virginia. 635, we'll talk to Cal Thomas. Cal, not running for office this time around. 705, Hung Cal is running for Senate in Virginia. 735, Tom Fitton on that Hunter Biden conviction. And then 805, Jenny Terror, who's reporting on the border for the New York Post. That's all coming up. Julie Gunlock, you running this time around? I can't remember. I am not. Good morning. Yeah, it's a good thing, too, because we'd have to give equal time (laughs) to your opponent. And you get a lot of time here (laughs) on O'Connor and Company. What a day it was yesterday. You know, uh, listen, listeners to this program heard Cully Stimson, who is a former... uh, Jag, he's a Jag officer in the Navy. He's a lawyer. He uh, was an attorney during the Bush administration at the Pentagon. He's now one of the top legal minds at the Heritage Foundation, where he's been for a couple of decades. And he was analyzing where things stand on the Hunter Biden uh, trial. And I said, exit question, what do you predict from the jury? And he said, I think they're going to come back with guilty pleas, and I think it's going to be before lunch. He did. He predicted it. And there you go. That's exactly what happened. Yep. This is why this is why people listen to this program. It's why our incredible executive producer, who always looks like she's dressed for a runway at five in the morning, Heather (laughs) Hunter, uh, was uh, she books these guests who make us look like we know what we're doing. That's right. And it's true. Hunter Biden was convicted. He was found guilty. First time in the history of our constitutional republic that the child of a sitting president has been found guilty on federal charges, federal criminal charges. And by the way, in this case, these charges is kind of of a tawdry nature. These are these are violent crimes when you're lying to obtain a firearm and uh, in possession of a firearm under the influence of uh, heavy illegal drugs. Yep. That's that's you know this isn't like some bookkeeping error. You know, yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. not like misidentifying you know expenses on a ledger sheet as legal fees when in <laughs> actuality they were, well they were legal fees. <laughs> but anyway, I don't want to dig into that one right now. Joe Biden's son Hunter is guilty. So the question here is, as we now wait for sentencing and his son faces twenty five years for these crimes. The question is, are you buying all of this? I mean, let's face it, Julie. We knew he was guilty because he was ready to plead guilty. In fact, the the plan here for Joe Biden and Merrick Garland was to get a guilty plea last year. So it's just, you know, old news by the time the election comes around. And that guilty plea was going to be in exchange for immunity for all of the real crimes that we should really, really, really be exercised about that we know Hunter Biden has committed. I'm talking money laundering, tax evasion, uh, representing foreign countries without registering as a foreign agent while his father was vice president and obviously selling access to his father, the vice president, making millions of dollars from hostile countries like China, Russia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan et cetera, et cetera, and then laundering that money through all of those shell corporations that they set up. That stuff, we're not going to see even a grand jury, let alone an indictment, look at until well after Election Day. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, again, with everything we know of on that laptop that was silenced and sequestered and censored and we were lied to about before the last election four years ago, the gun charge... It's first of all, it's the easiest one. It's a layup and it's like a parking ticket compared to the capital offenses that we already know about. So am I wrong to be cynical and look at this conviction and think, yeah, you know what? Of all outcomes, since since the sweetheart plea deal from last year is off the table because of two brave whistleblowers who showed up and explained how the Justice Department was corrupt in how they were investigating Hunter Biden in the first place, since they weren't able to get that done, this is actually the best possible outcome for Joe Biden. It is. They're, they Again, they, they decided to proceed with the crime that 
carries with it a first time offenders they don't get anywhere near the 25 years maximum possibility mm -hmm. um so they went with this they they want this off the sort of okay it's out of the way um he won't get much i don't think he'll get any jail time and they'll lean into the you know he was a troubled man he was addicted to drugs at the time um they'll lean into that and i don't think he'll get anything and again this makes this has sort of the look uh, the it, it the stink of uh, of fairness. This right. two you know they can deny the two tier justice system. That's what this is all about. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, every everybody says, oh well, this isn't the best part. The best possible outcome would have been an acquittal. No, actually, that would have been bad politically for Joe Biden. It would have That's been right. bad politically because it would have bought into the obvious notion that there are two sets of rules. And so this is, politically speaking, this is the best possible outcome for Joe Biden. And if you are sitting there clutching your pearls and saying, Do, are you saying that Joe Biden would use his son as some kind of sacrificial lamb <laughs> on the political <laughs> altar so that he could just advance his political oh, career? You don't know about Joe. If you, don't you haven't been paying yeah. attention like, to he, this man. He, he, the, 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 Joe Biden smeared the man who was involved in the car accident that killed his wife and daughter. And Joe Biden spent years smearing that man who did absolutely, ruined his life. That man yes. did absolutely nothing wrong. The fault was on Joe Biden's wife. And um, it was a terrible accident, though. And and he smeared that poor man who was driving the other vehicle. So, it, it, And again, to score political points. Um, oh. So he uses his essentially dead wife and dead daughter to score political points. Sickening. And he's used, and he's used his surviving sons as yes. political pawns ever since. In fact, he still uses his dead, dead son, son as a political yes. pawn and as a prop. Every chance he gets. He knew Hunter Biden was a good-for-nothing addict. And everyone's like, oh, he loves his son so much, and he's so worried about him, and we should be... Okay, then he should have forced his son into rehab. Then he should have stopped enabling him. And even better, he should have stopped forcing him to go out there and be the bag man for Hunter the family. Hunter was a moneymaker. That right. is all he cares about. And he milked that cash cow. He oh, didn't yeah. care if Hunter was killing himself with drugs. He didn't care that he was having sex with his He didn't his care that he was possibly, you know, uh, trafficking underage girls. I mean, this is the guy who's supposed to care about women. He didn't Give care about break. any of that. He didn't care about any of that. Hunter had a job to do. Make right. money for the That's family. Right. We're in a this is the family business. Let's go. So if you if you suddenly now think, well, there's no way that he would he would be willing to sacrifice his son with all of this scandal and all of this because it helps him politically. You, you don't know Joe Biden. It's almost and as amusing as people who think that Joe Biden was there to support Hunter. No, 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 right. no. <laughs> Carmilla was there to convey a message to that jury. So there it is. Yes, I think that this is all uh, it, it, paint the picture that helps Joe Biden the most politically. What helps him the best? What gives him enough talking points for the debate? that I still don't think is going to happen, but is uh, scheduled to come up at the end of the month. What gives him the most political deflections, or for that matter, other Democrats, the most political deflections when they are engaged in a debate, uh, if they're down ticket from Joe Biden, if you ask what's the best political outcome for Joe, this is the best political outcome for Joe. Uh, how did the media react to it yesterday? Exactly how you expect them to, but we'll share it for you because we know you don't watch or listen to them because you watch and listen to us, but we watch them for you so you can see exactly what the left is doing. We'll get that in a moment. First, though, it's 515 WMAL. Traffic and weather every 10 minutes. First on the fives, Jamie Witten is in the Hadid Carpet Canyon Traffic Center. Good morning, WMAL. Making sense of the news. Live from the Home Paramount Pest Control Studios. Home Paramount, the leader in pest control since 1939. Later this morning at the Chris Plant Show, one notable difference between the Donald Trump trial and the Hunter Biden trial, no one self-immolated at the Hunter Biden trial, 9 a.m. on WMAL. <laughs> when Fox News hires a legal analyst, they hire somebody like uh, Andrew McCarthy, who was an uh, assistant U.S. attorney in the Southern District of New York for decades, focused mostly on terrorism cases. He helped prosecute the original World Trade Center bombers, right? Mm. He's got a, a skill set and, 
uh, he's a conservative, but boy, you know, even conservatives get frustrated at Andy McCarthy because he's he really just sort of follows the law whenever yeah. he can, yeah. right? Uh, or they hire Jeffrey Tubin, who is a George Naked. Washington University law professor no, no. and <laughs> an academic. Oh, did I say t- Tubin? I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> Turley, I think is who I, I have. I have Tubin on my mind. Sorry, apparently. yeah, that's it's not that totally naked. Tubin's usually just without pants. But go on, Turley. Turley, <laughs> Turley, a George Washington law Sorry. professor, and by the way, a Democrat. Yes, you know when Fox News wants to get legal analysis, they <laughs> bring in this Democrat who just you know that over on MSNBC. Who do they hire, <laughs> Julie, to trot out as the legal analyst here? Andrew Weissman, who was the lead prosecutor for Robert Mueller's investigation into Donald Trump on Russian collusion. Andrew Weissman, the the man who prosecuted Enron executives for purely political purposes because Enron was the embodiment of George W. Bush's Texas Republican Party apparature. They got prosecutions on them, and then all of them got overturned in the Supreme Court. But that doesn't matter because it was a political prosecution. We know we've known that the DOJ has been using the law for political purposes for decades now. And Andrew Weissman is the living embodiment of that. So, of course, Andrew Weissman had this take on the Hunter Biden conviction. You know, I'm less interested in the particulars of the case. Uh, (laughs) This is a gun charge. The proof was overwhelming. Uh, I agree with your other panelists that it is rarely charged. In my experience, over 21 years at the department, I never saw this kind of case brought. It would. Uh, by the way, can I just let me pause? I'm I'm gonna let you finish there, Mr. Weissman. But boy, isn't that telling? I we never see these cases really charged or anything on people. These are the right. kind of laws that Democrats like, you know, raise billions of dollars for from these gun control groups. Yep. They call them common sense gun safety measures. You know, a drug addict shouldn't have a gun. Well, actually, that is common sense. I'd, I'd be OK with that. <laughs> but the Democrats who like to like run on infringing on your Second Amendment rights and, and we are constantly saying, you know, the only people who are going to follow this law or law abiding citizens who aren't your problem in the first place. If, you, if you're a criminal, if you're a drug addict, you're going to ignore this law. But no, they scream and like like go nuts and go to war against you and the Second Amendment and the NRA at every turn to get laws like that on the books. And here's Andrew Weissman, one of them, a partisan Democrat, admitting, yeah, we never prosecute these laws. Right. Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, yeah. this is this is not we don't. Then why is it there? If you don't prosecute it, if you don't enforce it, why even have the law? Right. right? And the law is to, you know, keep you law abiding people in town. That said, that's I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt because it gets even better. It gets even better normally be somebody who is a felon in possession of a gun that would be charged. I, I, I'm i more interested in what it tells us about the rule of law in this country in two ways. One, the son of the sitting president was uh, pretty quickly tried. Uh, he was given due process and he was found guilty. And you have the current president, the father of the defendant, making it absolutely clear that he is not pardoning him, that he could have ordered at any time his Justice Department to get rid of this case. He did not do that. He has said that he is not planning on pardoning him as well. And I I really think that if you look at this case, the, what is the big picture here? It's not um, a drug addict who possessed a gun for two weeks. It is that you have a president of the United States who is living embodiment of the rule of law. <laughs> Honestly. Oh, boy. It, I mean, what do you do with that? Yeah. Joe Biden is the living embodiment of the rule of law, Julie Gunlock. Just unbelievable. I, again, I will point out to you, of, of all the things that we have known about the laptop for four years now, that that they tried to keep quiet, that they tried to censor, that they tried to destroy. They tried to destroy Miranda Devine's journalism career, right. the reporter who reported on it. They literally silenced, censored, and deleted the social media accounts of people who shared the information. They tried to shame people into not reporting on the laptop with all the things that were in it. And in fact, they even said that if you are reporting on it or even talking about it publicly on social media, you are doing the work of Russian agents. It's disinformation of enemies of our country trying to undermine our democratic process. And of course, that was all lies. 
and and now that it's been verified and you know what's on that laptop, you look at all the crimes and they found the one crime that doesn't touch Joe Biden. That Joe Biden could say, yeah, that's my son. He's a troubled kid. And I, I don't really have anything to do with that. And that's the one they prosecute. And Joe Biden, Julie Gunlock, is the living embodiment of the rule of law. Just astonishing. And nowhere in the legal analysis yesterday did anybody step forward and say, okay, so now that we know that this thing that is verified by the laptop is real and is a crime and a jury has convicted Hunter Biden, what about this mountain of felonies, this mountain of crimes that's also on that laptop? If this one was true and this one led to a conviction, why are we not paying more attention to what James Comer and Jim Jordan and Jason Smith and the House are doing, investigating all this other stuff? The 20 shell corporations, the money transfers, the China, the energy companies, uh, Ukraine, Burisma, Russia, the Moscow mayor, Kyrgyzstan, the meetings at restaurants, the meetings on golf courses, the conference calls, bringing Joe Biden in, 10 percent to the big buy. Tony Bobolinsky, all of the things that are recorded and registered and documented on the laptop. No one yesterday said, hey, you know, maybe there's other bad things this guy did. No, no. You know what they're doing, Larry? They're actually trying to double down on this still could be Russian disinformation. We've <laughs> seen that from some members of the intelligence community just, just a couple days ago. Mean it's not they Russian said this could, you know, there was a gap. Between when this computer went from the shop, the computer oh. shop, to Julie, I don't know if you saw this on Twitter. They yeah. really are saying that this could have, it's, you know, it's, it's a sort of Mission Impossible scenario where someone could have swooped in and gotten it. I mean, yeah. it's absolutely absurd. But that's what they're, they're still trying to see some sort of or plant the seeds of doubt that's about right. the computer it's, and it's that's pathetic. and that's why you'll forgive me for being a little cynical when we see this conviction and and yes i nope joe biden will not pardon him He'll absolutely commute a sentence he will not have his son go to jail otherwise he loses the whole family because they're all in on it it's five now on 105.9 fm and streaming worldwide on the wmal app o'connor and company Five thirty-seven, Tuesday, the twelfth day of June. Thanks for tuning in here. It's O'Connor and Company at six fifteen. Jonathan Meyer is running for the seventh congressional district in Virginia. Six thirty-five brings us Cal Thomas. Seven oh five, Hung Cal wants the Republican nomination for Senate in Virginia. Seven thirty-five, Tom Fitton, Judicial Watch, and then eight oh five, Jenny Terre, New York Post on the border crisis. It's Larry O'Connor alongside. Julie Gunlock. Julie. Good morning. Julie, did you hear what I heard just now? We were talking through how the legal analyst on MSNBC, Andrew Weissman, was uh, saying this about uh, the Hunter Biden conviction. The, the big takeaway from the son of the president being convicted for felony gun charges for being a crack addict while obtaining, possessing, and lying about that addiction to obtain that fire uh, firearm here's andrew weissman's big takeaway you have a president of the united states <laughs> who is living embodiment of the rule of law even with respect to his only living son yeah there you go his only living son <laughs> he's the embodiment of the rule of law julie but but beyond that is it me or is Andrew Weissman actually a 14 year old girl on Instagram? Like, oh my God. And he was found guilty. And <laughs> what is... I really did expect him to go, like, oh my God, this is so mean. I'm just, I learned about this when I was at the mall shopping for shoes. <laughs> Making it absolutely clear that he. When Bev and I were getting our nails done, um... that clear. That 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 is that's that's a TikTok girl. He doesn't have the vocal fry. I'll give him that. It's still a Mulvaney. How, how many syllables are in the word clear? <laughs> Making it absolutely clear that he clear. Are. Seriously? <laughs> Andrew Weissman's a valley girl. Yeah. And you can really can contrast that to the former president's denigration yeah. of the rule of law. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, anyway, that's that. just a side note, but we are we are <clears throat> we're we're cheap, we're petty, and we're not beneath <laughs> making fun of people in the way they talk. We sorry. <laughs> oh yes, I know. You were dragged kicking and screaming yes. into this. Yes. Making it absolutely clear that he <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. How about David Muir over on ABC News? I'm sure that over on ABC News, the same news organization that brings you George Stephanopoulos as an objective observer <laughs> of politics. And, of course, the ladies of The View. That, oh, that's a news show, The View. Let's see what they're doing. Uh, Rachel, uh, folks are going to be watching very closely any kind of reaction from the White House, the Biden administration, and, of course, President Biden himself. And obviously, Rachel, these cases are vastly different. Uh, the case we witnessed a couple of weeks back with the former President Donald Trump, his guilty verdict. Uh, now today, President Biden's son, Hunter Biden, with a guilty verdict in this case. Again, the case is completely different. But one thing politically people will be uh, looking at is the reaction. Uh, we know uh, after the Trump verdict, a, a lot of rhetoric about a rigged system, um, you know, up, up against the former president. Uh, those are the words being used by the campaign, the former president himself. And just a couple of days ago, on the other hand, uh, former uh, the current president, President Biden, telling me in Normandy that he would respect the outcome. You know, Julie, it's almost like 30 minutes ago we just heard some political analysis of this right here on WMAL that said that ultimately the Hunter Biden conviction serves as a talking point for Joe Biden, for Democrats, and for the media. And and there they go. Within moments, yeah. that's all you heard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is just, you know, we're this. none of this is a surprise. Uh, none of this is a surprise. What, uh, what is going to interest me, though, is uh, is how the left is going to... Um, handle talking about Trump. Will this will this end this sort of convicted felon, convicted felon sort of modifier before his name at every turn? Now, of course, people are like, well, this isn't the same. Hunter Biden isn't running for president. Yeah. But I do wonder if the convicted felon sort of, again, modifier will be dropped um, from the descriptions of Trump from now well, on. Only when they realize it's backfiring. And right. that's actually happening very soon. You know what Trump should start doing? He should start referring to Joe Biden as unconvicted felon. <laughs> Honestly. The I think father that... of a convicted felon. No, 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 no. no. Leave Hunter out of it. Just say, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Call me a convicted felon. Joe Biden is an unconvicted felon. Doesn't doesn't mean he's not a felon. Yeah. We've seen all the crimes. The difference is he's not being, you know, he didn't have the entirety of the justice system at the federal level, as well as the entire offices of local prosecutors in two of the largest areas in our country, Atlanta, Georgia and Manhattan, finding crimes that aren't real to go after him. That's the only difference. But yeah, oh, sure. Joe Biden may not be convicted. He's an unconvicted felon. Very good. Um, let's see what CNN is up to. Now, I will say one thing uh, that is very interesting here. While Donald Trump has not seemed sympathetic at all about Hunter Biden's addiction issues, he himself has come from a family that had addiction issues and has talked openly about it. So interesting there that uh, he has... One of the things we've talked about is how many Americans find this case to be sympathetic in some ways. Donald Trump himself does not seem to be one of them. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, Donald yeah. Trump, who's been persecuted by these this family, is supposed to be sympathetic to right. the, the to this son who, again, is not just a drug addict. He's a human trafficker. Right. He's he, he's a disgusting specimen of a human being. Yeah. Uh, you know. D- I love that they act like this is the only thing. Just, you know, a couple of hits on a bong. Oh, you know, first of all, the the media, if if you want us to not think that this conviction, I heard a lot about, oh, there's conspiracy theorists out there saying that he was convicted to help Joe Biden. Uh, well, I don't know if it was done to help Joe Biden, but I can tell you this, this helps Joe Biden more than any other outcome he could have had. And if you really want me to not think that this conviction will be used as a political talking point to go after Donald Trump, maybe in the first 10 minutes of analysis of the conviction of the son of the president, you shouldn't immediately make it about Donald Trump. Yeah. Because that's what the media did. This entire thing yesterday was really a story about Donald Trump, which tells you everything. Right. It's 543. And uh, wrapping up here this uh, coverage of the... Hunter Biden conviction yesterday, um, yes, the immediate conversation. There, there were three texts that the media took yesterday, Julie. First of all, immediately to make it about Donald Trump. Uh, the second was to harp on this idea that Biden said he would not use a pardon. But 
uh, I'll hand it to CNN. They did point out what he could likely do. In this trial, and I will note, uh, the president has said that he would not pardon his son, that he will respect the verdict. I will note, look, legal nerd here, right, recovering lawyer. Uh, there's also the option to potentially commute any sentence. While he may not pardon his son, mm. he would have the option to commute. Whatever. That's right. And there he can weasel out by saying, oh, I, I never said I wouldn't commute his sentence. Oh, we've been through enough. This is a tragic story. And that's the third thing that they did was they talked about how, you know what, every single American re- can relate to this. That's right. <laughs> we can all relate to having someone in our family who goes on crack binges, who makes millions of dollars who overseas. Who records himself doing it. By, and records himself on his laptop doing it, uh, gets underage hookers sent to his room. Calls his um, stepmom abuse, the C word. Yeah. Abuses women, had an affair with his widowed sister in law and got her hooked on crack. You know, this yeah. is just a tale as old as time in the United <laughs> States of America. <laughs> yes. That is what they're trying to tell Th- us. This makes him more, this somehow makes Biden more relatable to That's every right. American. That's family. right. Right. He's just a regular guy, regular Joe. Yeah. Um, by the way, one other, as you mentioned, Jill Biden, uh, making sure that she's in the courtroom every day. She was late. Did you see that? This is as, as they were doing coverage of the conviction, they showed Jill rushing into the courtroom there. Yep. Um, saying, oh, my gosh, I can't can't believe she I was on a bathroom this. break. And then just hours after the conviction came down, Joe Biden gave a speech at a gun control group. This is just unbelievable. Big fundraiser. You know, one of those very groups that spend all of their time, you know, uh, uh, trying to take guns from re- from tr- from right, law abiding citizens, trying to restrict people who do actually the you know, follow the rules. Right. Um, and they host this guy, the yeah. father mm-hmm. of a guy who threw a, a way a gun at a high school. It's just unbelievable. His his son was just convicted on federal gun charges. And yes, they disposed of the gun in a waste can right across from a school. One of those very schools that where a shooting may have taken place that inspired the Everytown right. USA to even be created in the first place. Uh, and the, without and any these, again, dial, these are, the, these are the, the groups that are calling for laws to restrict gun ownership yeah. or, or restrictions. When these laws obviously already exist, that's why Hunter Biden has been prosecuted because he he didn't follow the law. Um, mm-hmm. And they're going to ask for, again, additional laws to stop what? To stop criminals from getting guns illegally. So it just, the, the whole I love also that behind Biden at this gun control speech, it said Gun Sense University. I mean... Gun sense. Gun After, sense. Uh, yeah. Uh, on the very day his son is convicted of lying on a form, on a legal form, to get a gun. Just amazing. Amazing optics. It, 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 it's almost like, I've heard this before, I'm sure, somewhere. But you know what? I, I Honestly, I invented this phrase. I'm going to start using it. Were it not for double standards, the left would have no standards at all. It's very good. You invented that? I didn't know that. Yeah, that was mine. I I. Very nice. Uh, I guess technically Chris Plant uh, sort of. Well, he made it famous. Okay. Oh, look at that. (laughs) That's a good one. I didn't know that. Uh, In fact, we'll share with you some of the details of what uh, Joe Biden mumbled his way through there. They started chanting four more years. We want four more years. So more of the laws that we demand get put into place, get uh, 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 enforced against the president's son. (laughs) Oh, oh, my other favorite thing about yesterday, Queen Jean-Pierre at the press briefing. Can we yeah. hear how she reacted to this at the press briefing? No, actually, no. we can't because they canceled the press briefing. No, and of course, of course, you know, the the some of the media on CNN yesterday, they were like, look, it's been a long day. Yeah, it was a long, emotional day. So like, it makes it's total sense. She needs a break. And, and they were also like, this is very normal. This yeah, is very here. normal. And even on CNN, I don't know if you have the listen, clip. I do, yeah. listen. Kayla Tashi live for us at the White House. Kayla, we'll let you get to that press briefing that was obviously delayed by the president's uh, remarks. Uh, it actually just got canceled. Yeah, we just yeah. learned that. Whoops. Briefing canceled after the president's son was convicted. Yeah. Well, uh, we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> But they didn't take a break. They actually went on, and the commentator was like, that's when the commentator was like, this is very normal. And then one of their other CNN commentators, who probably got fired this morning, was like, this is ridiculous. 
This is, I mean, he actually called this woman out and said, this isn't normal. This is a major media. This is, this affects the White House. This affects the president. And they cancel. So it was it was kind of an interesting exchange. It was an interesting exchange and, and fun to watch in real time. But in, in the long run, this doesn't make a huge amount of difference. The uh, talking point is there now. They can say, see, see, there's not two standards in our justice system. That's Even right. the president's not. And I do love, I, I love, uh, I'll leave this for you on this takeaway here as we wrap up this uh, current conversation. We'll have Tom Fitton from Judicial Watch joining us at 735 to talk about this conviction as well. But they kept saying, you know, the president could have stopped this. He could have jumped in. He could have fired the prosecutor. He could have had the justice department right. drop these charges. He could have done all these things. It's like, I, and and what they forgot to say is, and we would have let him. We He right. could have done all those things. Well, also, Joe, they did that before. Don't right. forget. Yes, he had and, a sweetheart and let's deal. not forget that less than a year ago, they, they did were that. basically ready to give this guy immunity. They got caught. That's all? Yes. That's all? They did Thanks try. to these great whistleblowers from the IRS and Jason Smith, the chairman of Ways and Means. Who are now being smeared, by the way. Yeah. Who's now being smeared, and their lives are try- they're, they're trying to ruin their lives. Yeah. So, so stop with the, oh, oh, how pristine this family is. They're dirty, they're corrupt, and they're despicable. Good morning. It's 553. <laughs>